Have you ever wondered how a single moment can change the course of history? Enter Giuseppe Zangara, a man whose legacy is shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Born on the 7th of September 1900 in the rustic landscapes of Italy, Zangara's life took a dramatic turn when he decided to immigrate to the United States. His journey to the New World was fueled by a desire for a better life, a chance to escape the limitations that his homeland imposed on him. The year was 1923 when Zangara, with a heart brimming with hope, stepped onto the shores of the land of opportunity. The socio-political climate was tense, a time of change and uncertainty, but this didn't deter Zangara. He embraced his new home with open arms and in due course became a naturalized citizen of the United States. A common man living an ordinary life, Zangara was a figure far removed from the world of politics and power. But as the 30s dawned, the winds of change began to blow and Zangara found himself swept up in their gusts. In the backdrop of this era, the stage was set for one of the most controversial events of the 20th century. Zangara, the Italian immigrant, the naturalized citizen, was about to step into the limelight. An unsuspecting figure, he was poised at the precipice of a moment that would not only change his life, but send shockwaves through the nation. A moment that would intertwine his destiny with that of Franklin D. Roosevelt, the president-elect of the United States. The world was oblivious to the storm that was brewing, the plot that was being hatched. Zangara, a man of humble beginnings, was about to become a key player in a drama that would shake the very foundations of American democracy. Little did anyone know, Zangara was about to etch his name into the annals of history. One day, Zangara made a purchase that would forever alter his destiny. A seemingly ordinary act, yet one that would soon become a focal point of American history. Giuseppe Zangara, an Italian immigrant and naturalized United States citizen, bought a handgun. A purchase made just a handful of days before a historic event, but at that moment, it was merely a transaction. Meanwhile, the nation was gearing up for a celebration. Franklin D. Roosevelt, a man of charm and charisma, had just been elected as the President of the United States. The air was filled with anticipation and excitement as the countdown to his inauguration was underway. Seventeen days, that's all that separated the present moment from the dawn of a new era. On the evening of February 15, 1933, Roosevelt was due to give a night speech in Miami, Florida. The city buzzed with activity as people prepared to catch a glimpse of their future leader, to hear his words and to share in the collective hope of a prosperous future under his leadership. Little did they know, they were about to witness a moment that would go down in history, but not for the reasons they had anticipated. In that crowd stood Zangara, the same man who had purchased a handgun a few days prior. He was not there to cheer for Roosevelt, nor was he there to critique his policies. No, Zangara was there with a much darker intention. As Roosevelt stepped up to the podium, preparing to address the crowd, Zangara readied himself for a deed that would etch his name in the annals of history. As Roosevelt's voice echoed through the night, Zangara's plan was set into motion. The crowd, the speech, the anticipation, it all faded into the background as he focused on his target. The handgun, once a mere object, was now a tool of malevolent intent, a symbol of the chaos that was about to ensue. The stage was set for a moment that would shock the nation, a moment that would unfold under the Miami night sky, a moment that would forever change the lives of many, including Giuseppe Zangara. Fate had a different script on the night of February 15th, 1933. As Franklin D. Roosevelt, the president-elect of the United States, delivered a night speech in Miami, Florida, a man named Giuseppe Zangara lurked in the crowd. An Italian immigrant and naturalized United States citizen, Zangara was not there to enjoy the oratory skills of Roosevelt. His intentions were far more sinister. Armed with a handgun he had purchased just a couple of days prior, Zangara planned to assassinate Roosevelt. As the president-elect took to the stage, Zangara took his shot. Five shots, to be precise. But as destiny would have it, none of them found their intended target. Roosevelt, 
The man who would lead the United States through the Great Depression and the Second World War was unharmed, but the bullets did not go to waste. They found their way into five bystanders, causing injury and chaos. Among the unintended victims was Anton Termack, the mayor of Chicago. A prominent figure in his own right, Termack's injury added to the magnitude of the event. The failed assassination attempt on Roosevelt was a shock to the nation, but the story did not end there. Zangara's botched attempt at killing the president-elect had far-reaching consequences, even though he had missed his intended target. Despite his failure, Zangara had still managed to cause significant harm. The injuries he inflicted upon Kermak and the other bystanders were severe, leading to a heightened sense of fear and tension. The incident served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the length some were willing to go to disrupt the peace. Zangara's failed assassination attempt marked a pivotal moment in history. It was a moment that highlighted the precarious balance between power and vulnerability, between life and death. It was a moment that resonated with the unpredictability of fate. While Zangara missed his intended target, the repercussions were still profound. His actions that night in Miami sent shockwaves across the nation, altering the course of history and leaving a legacy that continues to be studied and analyzed to this day. As with many historical events, a whisper of conspiracy began to circulate. A specter of intrigue and suspicion arose from the chaos of the failed assassination attempt, casting a long shadow over the events of that fateful night in Miami, Florida. The theory originating from the gritty streets of Chicago painted a picture not of a lone gunman, but of a puppet manipulated by unseen hands. It suggested that Giuseppe Zangara, the man who famously missed his shot at President-elect Roosevelt, was in fact a hired gun, a tool in the hands of none other than Frank Nitti, the infamous head of the Chicago Outfit Crime Syndicate. This theory proposed a different target, not the soon-to-be president, but Anton Cermak, the mayor of Chicago. Why might Cermak have been a target, you ask? Well, one must delve into the murky depths of Chicago's criminal underworld to find the answer. It was suggested that the shooting was a direct response to the rampant gang violence in Chicago, a city Cermak governed, and perhaps even a retaliation for an alleged assassination attempt on Nitti, supposedly orchestrated by Cermak himself just three months prior. Adding fuel to the speculative fire, Zangara was known to have been an expert marksman in the Italian army, a skill that would make him a valuable asset for any criminal syndicate. However, this aspect of the theory often sidesteps the realities of Zangara's progressive age, health issues, and the fact that his prior experience was with a rifle, not a pistol. It also conveniently ignores his short stature that required him to stand on a jostled chair and his own statements regarding his intended target. Of course, like many conspiracy theories, this one thrives in the realm of conjecture and speculation and remains unproven even to this day. Yet it continues to captivate the minds of historians and crime aficionados alike, offering an alternative narrative that veers from the path of accepted history. This theory, although unproven, adds an intriguing layer to the tale of Giuseppe Zangara. It reminds us that history is often not as straightforward as it seems, and that the truth can sometimes be as elusive as a bullet in the dark. Zangara's actions, whether influenced by others or entirely his own, left an indelible mark. The aftermath of the assassination attempt rippled through the lives of the victims and the nation as a whole. The five bystanders he wounded carried the physical and emotional scars of that fateful night. Anton Cermak, the mayor of Chicago, became the most notable victim, his life cut tragically short. The nation as a whole was left reeling. The attempt on the life of the president-elect, Franklin D. Roosevelt, just 17 days before his inauguration, shook the country to its core. It was a stark reminder of the fragility of democracy and the lengths to which some individuals would go to disrupt it. But what of the man at the center of it all, Giuseppe Zangara? An Italian immigrant and naturalized United States citizen, his motivations remain shrouded in mystery to this day. Was he a lone gunman driven by a hatred for leaders and the powerful? Or was he a pawn in a larger game, a hired killer working for the Chicago Outfit Crime Syndicate? 
Even after his execution in March of 1933, the questions surrounding Zangara persist. Some point to his past as an expert marksman in the Italian army, suggesting he was more than capable of hitting his target. Others highlight his health issues and the circumstances of the shooting, casting doubt on his ability to execute such a plot. Despite the enduring questions, one thing is clear. The legacy of Giuseppe Zangara is one of infamy. He is remembered not for his life, but for the violent act he committed and the chaos he left in his wake. His name is etched into the annals of American history, a symbol of the dark underbelly of society and the lengths some individuals will go to disrupt the status quo. And so, the tale of Giuseppe Zangara remains, a chilling reminder of how one man's actions can echo through history.